Hello and thank you for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. The timer has now begun. Former Army Chief and Kaholavan Chairman Benny Gantz has now 28 days, just four weeks, to do what Prime Minister Netanyahu could not, negotiate a coalition. Otherwise, he'll be forced to return the mandate to President Rivlin, who will then look for a third candidate. But the complicated task ahead isn't bothering the blue and white faction leader, as he invites Netanyahu to come back to the table, vowing to heal rifts and form a government. Well, it seems that so far, Gantz is on track, too. His Kacholavan party has reached out to leaders of parties across the board in hopes of securing the 61-seat majority needed to create a functioning government. And it's been confirmed that Gantz and Netanyahu will sit down to discuss a unity government in the coming days. The only problem is that, as expected, the Likud intends to negotiate from the position of a 55-member right-wing and religious bloc. And Blue and White has already refused to talk based on such preconditions, which Likud has also accounted for. Netanyahu loyalists say that they hope Gantz's talks will fail, providing an opportunity to whomever gets the next chance. Gantz's saving grace, then, may be coming from Lieberman, who not only holds eight coveted Knesset seats in his Israel Beitenu party, but claims that in light of pending indictments, Likud MKs are already secretly eulogizing Prime Minister Netanyahu. And if true, that means that the potential for a mutiny that paves the way to a centrist unity government could be just around the bend. Between ISIS, Iran, Iraq, Assad, and Turkey, the list of the Kurdish enemies is great. But for years, and while also caught up in a bloody civil war, the ethnic Kurdish people have been fighting for independence. As a consequence of the recent years of violence, however, critical infrastructure like medical services have been scant. And that's where the amazing Shevet Achim NGO comes into the picture. Over the past 10 months alone, the Christian Zionist nonprofit has brought to Israel over 44 Kurdish children, with two more patients expected Sunday, mostly from Iraqi Kurdistan and a few from Syria. And all of them suffer from heart conditions requiring advanced surgery and care, which makes their journey that much more incredible. Patients must first get to Jordan before they can enter Israel. And then once they arrive, they receive life-saving medical treatments at the Sheba Medical Center in Ramat Gan, just outside of Tel Aviv. But best of all is that the treatment doesn't end with the physical. Knowing that these people have experienced unknowable traumas, multidisciplinary teams including social workers, translators, nurses, and more are made available. And finally, under the oversight of the Shevet Achim NGO, the Kurds can also go out and tour the country. In a somewhat shocking move, the Ramallah Magistrates Court has now ordered 59 social media pages and news sites to be blocked as they're, quote, not registered with the PA Information Ministry and publish materials that threaten national security and public order. But upon closer inspection of the list of blocked pages, some glaring issues begin to emerge. Because while many of the sites do belong to terror groups like Hamas, many more belong to groups either critical of the PA and President Abbas or in support of Abbas's opposition. And that's why two major international press freedom groups are now condemning the PA court's decision, including Reporters Without Borders, who call the order unacceptable and designed to punish media critical of the PA. Further groups within the Palestinian Authority are protesting too, like the Palestinian Journalist Syndicate, which calls this a massacre of free speech and expression, vowing also to appeal the decision. Even Hamas, for its part, is picking up the pitchforks, calling the PA treacherous in that the new decision only means the PA and the occupation are standing together. This report confirms previous studies too, though, like the Press Freedom Index, which ranks the PA at 137th out of 180 for rights to open speech. Well, at any rate, in the meantime, interested parties can still access the banned pages through a virtual private network or VPN. Sentenced to 14 years in an Egyptian prison cell, Marcel Nino was just 24 years old and the only woman in a 13-person military operation. Codenamed the Bad Business, Operation Susanna was a top-secret Israeli mission launched to tear down positive relations between Egypt, the U.S., and Britain. And here's how it ran. In 1954, Israel was concerned that the above forces around the Suez Canal would block access to the vital waterway trade route. So the Bad Business squad tried to frame Egypt by bombing American sites in the country, including libraries, post offices, and movie theaters, which riled up authorities but did not cause any casualties. As for Nino, she was born in Egypt and spoke fluent French and English, making her the ideal spy. And being a Jew, she also dreamed of coming to Israel, which had only existed for just six years at the time. The issue then was when one team member was caught, eventually bringing down the rest of the squad. And Nino was one of the last to be taken into custody. 
while stuck behind bars for nearly a quarter of a century, reports say that Nino made the most of her time, starting a women's prison basketball team, volunteering at the clinic, and taking on as much work as she could. And upon her release, her dream was finally actualized. She immediately moved to Israel and at the age of 42, married and had children. And bear in mind, by the way, that the year was 1971 and Golda Meir, who was the sitting prime minister at the time, served as the matron of honor at her wedding. Then later, Nino was also recognized for her loyalty to Israel in a torchlighting ceremony for the country's 40th Independence Day celebrations. But finally, the trailblazer departed the world just two weeks before her 90th birthday, leaving behind children and grandchildren to carry on her spirit. That's all for now. So follow us on Facebook at Israel English News and, of course, on Instagram. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.